Hey guys, welcome back. In the last lesson, we talked about what is Apache Pig. In this lesson, we are going to look at some very basic Pig instructions to load and project data sets using Pig Latin. We will see how to load data sets, how to project and manipulate columns, how to print and store the result set, and finally, data type conversions. So before we look at Pig Latin instructions, let's first get to know the stock data set. We already looked at the stock data set in our MapReduce lesson, but let's refresh our memory again. The stock data set is stored in HDFS in this location. So let's copy this location, go to our Hadoop cluster, and let's open the file. So here's the stocks data set. The stocks data set is a text formatted file. Each line in the file has stock information like opening price, closing price, volume, adjusted close, etc. for a stock symbol for a given date. Each column value in the file is delimited by comma. So in short, the stock data set is a comma delimited text file with information about stocks traded in an exchange for each day. Now back to Apache Pig. To work with Apache Pig, you need to know Pig Latin which is a simple data flow language. Don't think of Pig Latin as a hard to learn programming language. It is very simple and I will walk you through the instructions step by step. So don't worry at all. A Pig script will have a set of instructions and each instruction will result in transforming the data set. Let's see where Pig is installed. In our cluster, it is installed under user lib Pig. So there you go. Here's where pig is installed in our cluster. To interactively work with pig, you have to enter the grunt shell. Simply type in pig and it will take you to the grunt shell. Here you can try out pig Latin instruction. Looking at the log messages here, you can already see pig is connected to the Hadoop file system at this location, which is our HDFS. Now we know about the data set and where to execute pig instructions. Let's try to load the stocks data set and see how we can project and manipulate columns from the data set using pig Latin. In order to work with the data set in pig, first we need to load the data set. The syntax for the load operator is very simple. You simply say load, give the location of your data set in HDFS, and mention the delimiter of the data set by using a load function called pig storage. Since we are dealing with a comma delimited file, we are saying comma. You also specify the names of each column in the data set along with its data type. The data types in pig is somewhat similar to the data types you would see in Java. For example, the data type for integer column is int, float is float, However, string is referred to as char array, date column can be referred as date time, etc. Each pig instruction will transform the data set in one way or the other. So, how do you refer to the transform data set? Simple, you assign a name to it. For example, stocks is the name with which we can now refer to the loaded data set. In pig Latin, a data set is referred as relation. If you want to know about the structure of the relation, you can use the describe instruction like this. So let's first run this load operator and load this data set in pick. Copy this instruction and simply paste it and execute it. That's it. Your data set is now loaded in pick. If you want to know the structure of the relation, you can simply use the describe operator like this. Describe stocks there you go so this operator will list you the structure of the relation stocks now let's transform the data set let's say i want to project or derive three columns first the symbol column second perform a substring operation on the exchange column and third subtract closing price from the opening price whenever you would like to project some columns from a relation you would use for each operator. Take a look at this instruction and read the instruction like this. 
for each record in the stocks relation, generate symbol and get the first two characters of the exchange column using the substring function and subtract the closing price with the opening price. Finally, give a name to the resulting data set. In this case, we are giving the name as projection. That's it. Simple, isn't it? Now, let's say you want to print this result set. Simply use the dump instruction along with the relation name like this. So let's execute this for each instruction now. If you notice until now, PIG did not submit any MapReduce job. PIG generate MapReduce jobs only when you print or store the result set. Now let's say you want to print the output of this for each instruction right here. You simply say dump projection. Now, as you can see, this is going to execute a MapReduce job in the Hadoop cluster. And there you go. Here's the result of the dump operator. It is now printing the records from the relation named projection on the screen. And the operator we used is the dump operator. It is not ideal to always print the result set in the screen. Most of the time, what you would need is to store the result in HDFS. So if you like to store the result set into HDFS, simply use the store operator along with the relation name like this. So here you're simply saying store the results from the relation projection into and you're giving a HDFS location. The HDFS location here is output pick simple projection. Before you execute this, make sure this output directory is not there in HDFS. If this directory location is present in HDFS, your pick execution will fail. So make sure the directory is deleted or removed before you execute the store operator. So let's execute the store instruction. There you go. Again, you see PIG is translating the store instruction into a MapReduce job. And you can also track the execution of the MapReduce job using the URL location right here. There you go. Here is the MapReduce job that PIG just executed and it has succeeded. So if you go to this location, output PIG simple projection, you will see the records from the relation projection. Okay. Now we know some very basic big Latin operators. Let's take a look at these three load instructions right here. In the first instruction, we have the load operator with the data set location, but we haven't specified any column names and data types. In the second load instruction, we are loading the same data set, but we are giving the column names, but no data types. Whereas in the third load instruction, we are giving the column names and its corresponding data types. All three load instructions are perfectly legal in PIG, but which one would you prefer? I prefer the third one because we are perfectly defining the schema for our data set in the third load instruction. Doing so improves readability and usability of your PIG script. So always define your data set properly with column names and data types. But aren't you curious to know how to project the columns with the first load instruction since we did not assign any column names? I'm sure you are. Let's run the first load instruction and do a describe on the relation. So we have loaded the data set, the same exact stock data set, but in this case, we have not specified the column names. So let's now describe stocks. You may also notice we are reusing the name of the relation stocks. So we have loaded the stocks data set and we are describing the stock data set. The output of the describe says the schema is unknown. So PIG doesn't know the schema because the developer did not provide a schema, right? Let's say if you want to project columns from the data set with schema not known, how would you do that? You could project using the position of the column in the data set. In the load instruction, you have already mentioned that the data set is comma delimited. So to refer the symbol column, which is the second column in your data set, you can simply refer to the symbol column as $1. Take a look at this highlighted instruction right here. You could project using the position of the column in the data set. 
In the load instruction, you have already mentioned that the data set is comma delimited using the pick storage load function. So to refer the symbol column, which is the second column in your data set, you can simply refer to the symbol column as $1, not $2 because the index starts from zero. So look at this projection. $1 is for symbol, $0 is exchange, and $6 is closing price, and $3 is opening price. This raises another question about the data types. Since we did not specify a data type for the columns, how does PIG know about the data types of the columns? So let's execute this for each instruction first, and then let's do a describe on the relation projection. As soon as you execute the for each instruction, you can see PIG is doing some implicit casting. And look at the output of the describe operator for relation projection. When you don't specify the data types, PIG assume the data type to be byte array by default. PIG is very smart. Based on the operation you perform, PIG will convert byte array to the appropriate data type. For example, since you're trying to perform a subtraction, which is a numerical operation between columns at location six and location three, PIC converts both values from byte array to double. But why double and not an int? That is because you might lose precision if the columns you're subtracting happens to be decimal numbers, right? Similarly, since you're trying to do a character manipulation using the column at location zero, PIG will do an implicit cast from a byte array to a char array. Now let's go back to the instruction and let's try the second load instruction. In this case, we are giving the column names, but we are not giving the data type. Now let's do a describe again. As you can see with this instruction, we have given the column names, but not the data types. So all the columns are defaulted to byte array. PIG is also forgiving when the data does not match the data type that you have mentioned. When that happens, PIG may substitute null. Even though PIG does a good job in assigning and converting data types, it is not always a good idea to let PIG make decisions about the data types, as it may lead to unexpected issues when the actual value does not match with the data type conversion. So it is always better to assign proper column names and data types ourselves. As developers, we understand the data set better than any tool could. If you look at this load instruction, we are reusing the relation name. We are reassigning the stocks relation to different load instructions, and that is perfectly okay. The output of the stocks relation will always reflect the last instruction that it is referring to. So let's summarize what we have seen so far. At first, we looked at loading and projecting data sets. Then we looked at how PIC handles data set when we don't specify the column names or data types. We also looked at the default data type assignment and implicit conversion that PIC could perform on the data set in the absence of data types for columns. With that, let's wrap this lesson. See you in the next lesson.